I'm talking about straining for that logo on the side of your helmet and not the name on your back. Yes, sir. Because we know what it represents. It represents everybody here you see and everybody you can't that we've talked about. I'm here to strain with you, men. I swear to God I'm here to strain with you. Let's go. Everything you got, strain with everything you got. Let's go. Let's go. Bills on three. One, two, three. Bills. You're listening to the Off Tackle with John Fita Show with your host, Joe Miller. Well, what is going on, everybody? Welcome. Welcome, everybody, into the Off Tackle with John Fina Show uh, on the Buffalo Rumblings Vidcast Network, presented by Ficta, Endel, and Elmer Eye Care. My name is Joe Miller, sitting alongside my very good friend, John Fina. Back in the saddle again. Here we are. Look, it's back me. in the saddle again. Do, 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 do Joe like, Miller from need, across the pond. We need an introduction. Welcome back, Joe Miller. Do we need an introduction? Do you need me to like tell you a couple things about me and stuff like that? Or are you are you? Hi, good? my name is You're John not... Fina. I have a podcast. I used to have a consistent and reliable co-host named Joe Miller, but he decided to do walkabout across the pond. And Indeed. anyway, welcome back, Joe. It's good to be here. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank yeah. you for Jerry Ostrowski and uh, Jay Spencer King, who sat in for me. Uh, I got to watch back the, uh, the the show with you and Jay Spence from last week, which was great once I got back. Uh, yeah, you guys did a good job, and uh, I had an, an amazing time, and I want to say it's good to be back, and it's good to, have, to be sitting here with you, and it's good to be sitting here with everybody that's piling into the comments section. Thank you guys so much for being a part of the show. Apologies for being a little bit late. Uh, technical difference difficulties it's just one of those technical things. difficulties <clears throat> yeah please stand by as we have uh as we're taking care of technical difficulties but uh yeah we had a football game yesterday Woo we did we ever <laughs> holy smokes didn't see that one coming did you uh, um i was texting jay spence the king i think from europe and i i was saying something to him to the effect of um the 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 ability for this team to remain consistent concerns me. Um, I don't know where it starts. You're from. just diving right in, ain't you, bro? Uh, I, I, diving yeah, right we're, in. Yeah, we're just yeah, we're yeah. It's been a minute <laughs> since you and I have talked. Um, yeah. And uh, even even when you like it, when you liken it to great football teams, and taking it back to when you played in the in the era of the Bills that you played in. You know, yes, there was the the one off game that it was like you know during the season where it was just a bad matchup, we, which we've talked about whether it was the the Steelers or the Chiefs or somebody would just come along and and just just throw haymakers at you guys and it would be their night and it just wasn't your night. And it was what it was what it was, but by and large, your team was consistent, like consistent. You, you knew what you were going to get from the defense, you knew what you were going to get from the offense, and you knew what you were going to get from special teams, and I just. Over the last year and a half, this team is just wildly inconsistent. And I just don't know that that's a brand for winning football when it matters, unless they do the inevitable get hot at the la at the right time, at the la at the end of the year, the last five games they play, right? And it's just like, bang, we are like hitting on all cylinders right now. Am I making sense to any of this? And that's the show, everybody. Thanks for coming to the Off Tackle Show. Joe encapsulates the entire thought process in 14 sentences. Whatever. Adding a lovely dash of, I was in Europe. Oh. We have a lot to talk and, about. You've been to Europe multiple times. Yeah, well, I'm just playing with you, Joe. Yeah, uh -huh. there's there, there's a concern there. You know, from our perspective, right? Dial it back and think about the Giants' perspective. This is a one in four team mm -hmm. who had very high expectations. Uh, and they come in and just feeling it's a homecoming for Dable. He, he's a pretty personal guy. The guys like him, they want to play for him. So I don't think it's it's fair to say play above their ability, but these are all you know real footballistas, man. Mm -hmm. And they they played a very solid game against us, and we yeah. had a couple of a couple of mistakes, a couple of miscues, not many, but by and large, this thing really looked like a slugfest. Yeah, 
Yeah, I will. I will say this. Uh, watched the game back today uh, while I was working, had it on in the background and, and was watching it while I was doing some other things, trying to catch up, getting unburied from my email uh, after being off for two weeks. Um, I feel like even on my well, show, were you, were, you, were you in mm-hmm. Europe? No, I was I was just in my basement. Just <laughs> two weeks. Uh, I had a green screen. My wife and I were downstairs in the basement, green screening pictures. Um, uh, but uh, I feel like my viewpoint I was skewed from the stands versus what I rewatched on television. I feel like that game last night presented itself differently live than it did on television. And I don't, I don't know if it's because of the broadcast team. I don't know if it's because of the angles. Um, it could have okay, been. So, so tell, tell me which one was more aggravating being there or watching it on TV. It was more aggravating being there. And even it felt like even the crowd felt it. The crowd just didn't feel like the Miami game. The crowd was insane. Like the, like even McDermott said, that's the loudest I think I've ever heard the, the stadium be. It was insane. Uh, in London, it was m- the majority of the fans were Bills fans. And while they weren't necessarily Bills fan- fans from Buffalo, they still understood when to get loud and they weren't as loud or as consistent but they were good they were in like the crowd early and they mentioned it uh, mentioned it on the broadcast uh Tarico did he was like you know the crowd really hasn't had much to cheer about they just the crowd was just kind of listless they they were just they were more there almost like not shell shocked but like waiting for something to happen um so it was it was different being in the stadium than when I when I watched it back I was do, like do you do you do you find that happen in Kansas City or regardless no. they're loud no, Kansas City oh, they're loud regardless. Like re- right. regardless, loud. Maybe, maybe it's a maybe it's a training event for the twelfth man too for Bills Mafia, right? You know, maybe. But to oh, answer yeah, to answer your to, que- be- to answer your question or, or to re- to reiterate what you said on television, it looked like a slugfest. It looked like a defensive battle where these two teams were going at each other. in In the stadium, it just felt like there was just a lack of energy, a lack of urgency yeah. from this Bills team. Yeah, I, I can I can definitely relate to that. But uh, on TV, it was just a slugfest, mm-hmm. and no, nobody was doing anything theatrical. I mean, the Giants had a few long plays, a few long catches, a couple of uh, JA to to Stefan Diggs. You know, were exciting to watch. Mm-hmm. But by and large, I mean this this was a team that that played well defensively, as did we. So that that's going to give you a low scoring game, I think. Part of the issue with, you know, my expectation, right? This is the part where we do expectations. I yep, think yep. this is block number one, expectations for the game. Thoughts on the game, yes. Thoughts on the game. Uh, my expectation was coming off a loss against Jacksonville, total blowout, right? Mm-hmm. Well, not total blowout. I'm, I'm a little bit more reserved than that. But I, I didn't think like this was going to be nearly the game that it turned out to be. I, I thought vengeance is mine, say mm-hmm. it, the Bills, mm-hmm. and you were going to see a 21-point game. Same. And the, the Giants were not were not going to give that to us. Uh, I did not expect, and we'll talk about it in the bad, but I didn't expect I didn't expect uh, Tyler Bass to miss two. <laughs> Whoopsie daisies. Yeah, yeah. I didn't. And, I, know, I, I, I didn't expect to be punting it from their 38 either. Mm. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't remember the last time that's happened. Like, whoa. well, <laughs> if you go back and watch his first uh, push, right. He had a little hitch in his giddy up and that uh, that's why it pushed. The, I saw they, it as soon as it happened. I, I, as soon as I saw him, he kind of took a half, a quarter step and leaned a little bit. And I yeah. just said, Oh, that's off. <laughs> if somebody could remind me in the excuse me if somebody could remind me in the comments section unless you remember they punted from the 38 before his first miss did they not uh i'm pretty sure they punted the, before his first miss. no i think the miss was on the second drive or no the second drive was the gabe uh davis fumble fumble yep that's right right um if anybody remembers Which, by the way i mean you know you you gee, you know that's your job is to hold the ball yeah. Right. Well, we're, and I know we're going to get into something a little bit later, and I'll I'll circle back to that comment. But <laughs> it was it was it was a curious game. The Giants and Dable did the right thing, you know, sustaining drives. Mm-hmm. They weren't terribly pretty, but when they needed a play, they got the play and got the first down. But yeah. it, it wasn't pretty. Yeah. Uh, there were some penalties that, you know, kept drives alive. 
So, yeah, my expectation was Bill's victory without me sitting on the edge of my seat sweating like, uh, well, I won't use my favorite analogy. <laughs> no, I, I when I sat down at the, in the stadium, the guy that sits next to me who was been sitting there forever. He's like, yeah, we're like 15 point favorites. And I was like, well, we should win by 21, which is exactly what you said. And somebody put in the comments section when you have high expectations and they're not met, kind of like what we are all feeling. Right, That's right, kind of what happens. right, all right. Right. And then and then what comes with that with a loss? Everybody's lashing out, you know, mostly on Twitter. But you go back. I watched the game just like you did. I just finished rewatching it. And there was some really solid play in that game. There were just a couple of miscues in a very hard fought game. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. frankly, we are lucky to get out of there with the W. Very lucky. Escape. They 100% yeah. escaped. Um, I don't remember who I was talking, what I was watching or who I was talking to. I was watching another show or listening to another content creator talk, basically saying the same thing that I said, which was that was a game that that set up for it during the drought years that we would lose. And I said that on my show this morning. I was like, I'm sitting there <clears throat> and the penalty, the, the interference penalty gets thrown. We get the untimed down as, and all that, that whole sequence is happening. And I'm like, re rethink, I'm thinking in my head, how my show is going to go the next morning, knowing that we just gave this game away, a game that we trailed, came back, actually fought back, showed some moxie, put some points on the board, and then basically just gave it away. Um, yeah, but it, it was it, all in all, it was a W. It was a win. Yeah, exactly. Exa and I think that, and I've been uh, smart today. I've been pretty busy. I have not been diving into Twitter and somehow my algorithm is all jacked up. I'm not seeing posts from people that I normally do, and I don't want to go get notifications from everybody either. Maybe they block but, you. Yeah, well, you can block me. I'm so, I mean, gosh, I am so controversial, right? It's true. It's true. Hey, so this is thoughts on the game, and I want to ask you. Yes. So, you know, if you're standing in front of me and you're fronting me up and I headbutt you, I'm cool with that being a 15 yard flag. I'm okay. good with that. Okay. But if I see you from like six yards away and I go full speed and blow you up and knock you down, somehow that's the same as a mild headbutt. <laughs> I mean, what really, what really constitutes relieving a guy of his cleats in the middle of the game? Do you honestly have to just out of the blue come swinging? Because to me, what, uh, and who the hell was it? 99, decleating Spencer Brown yeah. in the end zone as he yeah. did. I'm like, how, you know, you got to... You got to take like about four or five steps to get enough uh, momentum to dump Spencer Brown like that. But no, 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 we can't throw you out of the game. We could still have three penalties on them, two on us. It was one. And you're out of the game. It was one on us. It was I only it was one. Two. Nope, three and one. Uh, oh, three, so it was, three on them and it was one on just uh, on Dion. Just on Dion. That whole sequence. Yeah. I watched that several times today when I watched the game back. I kept rewinding it, and watching it back. Um, first of all, for Spencer Brown to fall like that, it, it takes a long time. Right, it takes a long time for that. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it doesn't happen quick. So hold on, um, hold on, Joe. I'll do the sound effect for you. Timber. Uh, if Spencer Brown falls in the forest and nobody's there to hear him, doesn't make a noise. Doesn't make a noise. Um, he's a big old boy. I, I will say that I've stood next to him before, and he is a big dude, like a really, really big dude. Um, but uh, I, I don't, I don't, I don't. There's so much. In the in the stand, the reason the crowd was angry was exactly what they were talking about on the broad, broadcast. We all knew what was going to happen. Like the play happened, all of this is after the play. It's all dead ball stuff, which means that all these penalties are going to offset. So, what is taking? What did it take? Five minutes? Seven minutes? Oh. Like I don't. Maybe I'm exaggerating on the time, but it took forever. But to your point, I don't understand either. At what what measure constitutes? I think it's a punch, right? You have to throw a punch in order to be ejected, or you have to be the second well, man it, it, in. There's like second it, man in, or is that hockey? I think hockey has a second man in rule. I, and I don't know. by that yeah. same thought process, I mean, aren't they encouraging more people to just kind of run up and declete a guy when he's looking at somebody else? Well, what's interesting it is like it, it's starting it's, to happen more and more. It happened a couple times this weekend, uh, and it's it just happened earlier for the Monday night game uh, with the Chargers and the Cowboys. Is like there's pregame like tussles going on now around the NFL. Like so, there's something happening where, to your point, where people are feeling more emboldened, 
right, to do things that maybe are outside of the character and the nature of what football is about? Hmm. Well, I don't know. Um, all I know is you mix uh, very large men, <laughs> testosterone, Steroids. and adrenaline, and uh, you're not gonna, some of the results are, are not going to be like a cake baking competition. Yeah, it's, that's that's absolutely fair. I I, I loved. Uh, have you? Seen, I'm sure you've seen Fifty First Dates with Adam Sandler, right? So, uh, her brother, who's uh, on the juice and like yeah, yeah, Edward's yeah. character, is like that's the roids talking. Like just <laughs> <laughs> just some funny stuff going on. But you just you just you just don't know, right? Um, but yeah, that whole sequence was interesting. There was a lot of flags in this game again. Like this is two weeks in a row now where like it was just flag happy. They were throwing flags forever, any and all reasons. Well, seven on the Bills, nine on the Giants, and 22 on that one play we just talked about. Right, and hats. 22 flags and, and hats. hats. Right. <laughs> they threw just about everything they could they could throw on the field. That uh, Right, right. Yeah, that, that could have gotten out of control pretty quick. But all in all, it was a good football game. It comes down to just being a W. It, it, you know, <clears throat> the win is all you're after. You know, they don't they don't check at the end of the season when they go to playoff seedings on how you won. Uh, it's just it, is the W there or is it an L? That's all they necessarily care about. Um, and I, at the at the caution or risk of knowing what you're going to say, hmm. Josh Allen was pretty dejected after this football game like he was dejected in his post game mm -hmm. interview he was dejected uh at the podium they talked about it on good morning football this morning what 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 would be your takeaway in a game like this where as a player where it's just like it wasn't that things were going wrong necessarily yeah well look i i know where you're going with this i mean there's a lot of things swimming through josh's mind and some of those are swirling around on social media and shoot every broadcast everybody commenting on football right now wants to know what's wrong with the bills mm. josh had two poor throws very two very poor decisions right well dawson knox could have bailed him out but he could have won the game with that throw and he short-armed it he short -armed and then the other the other one was the interception he double hitched and then short-armed it the other one was the interception latavius murray snuck out of the backfield i, I believe it was second down he didn't need to go for the whole enchilada, and he throws a ball over the middle, you know, with pretty thick coverage. Latavius Murray sneaks out of the backfield, sits down at about five or six yards, right where the linebackers were, but Josh decides to try to get it over the linebackers, underneath the safeties, you know, four guys nearby, and it gets tipped. So he's not happy about that. And then, of course, the obvious thing that everybody's talking about, why aren't we spreading the ball around more? Right. Why don't we have a more, right. you know, uh, I don't want to say efficient, more varied passing game. And and I knew we'd talk about this. So I started thinking about it really hard. I, so I spent like nine seconds on it. Right. <laughs> so it's one of or all of three things. It's Dable with play creation. Too many things where Stefan is just the flat out first read. And Dave, we're not getting. You mean Dorsey? That's what I said. They both start with Dio. They they do. Like, well, yeah. no, D O D A. But it's, you're close. You're close on this. Uh, I pr I pronounce him Doble. <laughs> fair. That's fair. All right. So we'll Dorsey, send him a me we'll send him a memo that John Fina has. I've I've, I've, I've already let him go. He already got his pink slip. I don't even remember his name. He's like moved already. The U Haul showed up. He's we gone. fixed the glitch. No. It's going to work itself no, out. I, I'm 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 okay with Dorsey. Um, you know. So, so that we'll never know the answer to, mm -hmm. right? And the other thing is, hey, Gabe Davis and a slot receiver need to show up. Who are they? They need to get open. And the third thing is we are not utilizing either Dawson Knox or Dalton Kincaid the way that we need to be to, to yeah. relieve the, the, the middle of the field. But what is the problem? So, yeah. So post game, Josh is like, yeah, I threw two stupid balls. And by the way, I'm a little frustrated that either everybody has convinced me by virtue of play design that I'm only throwing to 14, or I'm trying to be nice in an interview and on the side, Khalil and Gabe and a couple other guys, you know, I'm going to have to have that step it up talk with. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And sadly, you know, you and I will never know. Maybe, maybe Adam Schefter knows. As a former player, 
um, which is why we have you on this show. Um, oh, for thanks. Your, for I thought it was ex- because of my blue awesome eyes. Commentary. Blue eyes. Johnny's mm-hmm. got blue eyes. Anyways, um, as a former player, do you uh what's the word do you uh lean into do you pay attention to do you see it when things to the average fan like myself feels like the creativity just isn't there so much like in a relationship when like you know what the 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 excitement the butterflies the the things that make this whole thing special is gone it's time to break up now i'm not talking about breaking up with anybody on the the bills team i'm just saying 2020 2021 That passing game was special. Like, there were guys wide open all over the field. Uh, The routes that they were running, the the base Mm -hmm. systems that they were running, and it's the same system, same vernacular. Obviously, the the, organically, the, the offense has changed through the years by design, has to. But it just seems like the magic isn't there, right? It it just seems like so. I got corrected by Peyton today because I said on my show earlier, I just don't have the confidence. It used to be if, if the Bills were third and whatever, third and nine to third and 22, if Josh Allen dropped back, I knew he was going to throw. As soon as he let the ball go, I knew it was going to a wide open wide receiver down the field. Now it's third and seven, and I'm like, I'm not sure if we can com- well, like if we can convert this. Okay, I, I hear what you're saying, and I'm not, I'm not going to entirely disagree with you, but what we've also said is we need to be a little bit more formulaic, a little bit more surgical, work the middle of the field, not try to go to the deep ball every time. So, you sure. know, pick your I'm poison. Not about, yeah. I'm not talking right? about deep balls. So, I'm, not, I'm, talking, I'm talking about scheming guys open. I'm talking about scheming guys open and route combinations and, and route creativity uh, the Hardy route was great, right? The one that he scored yeah. on. That was there was well, uh, well, the, and, the Dawson and, Knox route that, that that could have sealed the game. That was a great play call. It just well, it doesn't just a bootleg. I mean that 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 is a great play call, but there's nothing special about that particular but, play. Other but it was than open. You got to call it. Yeah, you know, I think they did a couple of those things. They had Stefan Diggs in the backfield. He released mm-hmm. for that first down, and then he motioned right to left across your formation. Took the ball, picked up the first down. But yes, the I think the a little bit more creativity. But we're we're talking about the passing game. The running game was absolutely fantastic. The passing game, the offensive line in last night's game was outstanding. Their very best performance. They gave up basically one hold and one pressure that belonged to them. Mm-hmm. Um, there were three instances where Josh, Josh dropped to eleven. 11 yards again, which I still <laughs> scratch my head. So you laugh at that, right? But when you I, I, No, what, I laugh at the, the picture that I get in my head is you pausing your television, grabbing your pencil, walking up to your TV and going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Well, eight, the, nine, the, the funnier part about that is watching me try to erase the pen <laughs> off of my screen. I thought this was a, uh, you know, a dry erase, damn it. Your wife is like, you've been using the Sharpie again, haven't you? <laughs> yes, I've been using the Sharpie. Keep the Sharpie away from that guy. So what happens when you do that is you, you step up in a more aggressive way. If you drop just to eight, then you take a single step up and you release. You drop to 11 and you see the guy come and you're more rushed. Mm-hmm. And then you're you're out of sync. You know, it's not a smooth step and throw. You're evading a rush. Then you got to settle. Then you got to step. Then you got to throw. Right. Uh, and I'll, I'll I'll start the good right now since we're staying on offense. Go back and watch the offensive line play. It was outstanding. Minus uh, on pass protection, two plays, and minus uh, Torrance uh, not getting off the double team quick enough on the backside of a B block, which really you know gave up a, an awful um, uh, tackle for loss. Uh, Dawson Knox, go back, watch the film. He blocked his butt off in the run. It is far and away the best game he has ever blocked. Mm, it's I a couldn't lot. believe it's it. A lot. I kept mm. I kept checking the jersey number. I didn't I didn't think it was him. I was trying to get a look at his face after that, saying <laughs> somebody is you know, like Alec Anderson is out there wearing Dawson Knox jersey. What the hell's going on? That's funny. You you can tell it's uh, Dawson because he's got a giant helmet and his logo on his helmet is really small because his helmet yeah. proportionally is so much bigger. I uh, it's funny that uh, you say it's funny that you say that because I felt like 
Josh Allen doesn't have a very good poker face. Josh Allen, when he doesn't trust his line, his eyes are down. And I felt like his eyes were down because they were in the backfield a lot coming after him. And he was having, he couldn't get set. So it surprises me the run blocking I would agree with, but it surprises so, so, me that so, you feel like that they played awesomely in pass blocking. They did. He, and and, and if you go stop. back and you, and you know, you got to go back and look at the guys that came free. Okay. There are only five offensive linemen. Correct. And to be fair on a couple of those schemes, you know, there, there are times when the center right guard, right tackle are sliding to the right. Right. And then they, they, they drop a guy into coverage or they, they bring a guy in a different different way than you would expect. It, it's actually the quarterback's guy. But there were, I would say, all but, well, damn, nearly all those pressures did not belong to the offensive line, unless, unless you want five guys to block six or seven. But if you go back, you have to rewind the film. When you look and you see pressure, I immediately go back. I want to know whose fault it was. And you go back and say, oh, well, that's the quarterback's guy. Oh, well, well so, so, they, some, they brought too many. Some of it, some of it is defensive scheme. Martindale is a heavy mm -hmm. blitz coach, as yeah. far as from a defensive. And he, he, had a he had a good plan. He had a great plan. He had a good plan, but it wasn't it wasn't on the offensive line. But what's you even surprising about, there, and this goes back to the creativity in the schemes, as far as the route combinations, is the mm -hmm. fact that Josh used to be one of the best quarterbacks against the blitz there was, which made teams not blitz him. And now when the blitz comes, he gets uh, not sure what to do which tells me well, they, or should tell they, me that there's not a guy, there's not a hot route, right? There's not a guy ready. Right. Well, and that, that scheme, sure. Uh, and they used a good blend of spy and blitz. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, they, you know, Martindale did a nice job in this game. For sure. But again, you know, what neutralized it really well was the running game. Yeah. I mean, yeah. and, and hats off to every running back, include Damian Harris for his, you know, impending recovery. It sounds just like a neck strain. Um, Hopefully, knock on wood. Mm -hmm. uh, so we should get him back in maybe two weeks or less, I think, from that. And uh, Latavius Murray really ran hard, and and so did um, so did Cook. Cook looked great, and Cook running through the middle of the line. Um, and it was it was pretty funny because uh, you know we we ran somewhat similar plays to the Giants, right? You'd expect that. And just to see them work against one another was kind of a curious thing. I was like, oh, this is like this is like looking at training camp, you know, two years ago. This is probably what it looked like a little bit. That's funny. But we, we had a we had a we did a nice job getting um Edwards in as an extra tight end and mm -hmm. as a, a fullback actually in the first few plays. I thought it was a pretty cool running game plan. We ran a lot of zone, we didn't hit the edge a lot, but we also ran that scheme of zone where you work either the tackle or the tight end to the backside and try to create a, a, a more or less a planned cutback rather mm -hmm. than hitting a play front side. And it worked, it worked beautifully. It yeah. really did. Deion Dawkins pulled a lot in this game. He pulled yeah. a lot. It was surprising how much he pulled. And he picked up his guy every time too. Yeah. He did a terrific job. Yeah. There was just a one play where James Cook fell into the back of his legs because somebody else came from a different direction, which and connected with James Cook. But um, I thought the run defense was was very good. I know that Saquon is coming off of a, an ankle injury. I'm sorry, I'm coming off an ankle injury. And uh so he was not limited, but they even talked about on the broadcast he may be a little bit limited, other than the two runs he had late. I felt like they bottled him up well. And obviously, yeah, but, and anytime you're playing against Saquon Barkley, you're on notice, right? Yeah, the defense played great. I made a little list here. Yeah, a list. And you know, inexperience aside, Dorian Williams and Terrell Bernard are flying around. They are playing and good football. Bernard is not afraid to stick his nose up there. No, nope. the big guys. He slips in and makes a hit. It's it's terrific. Rousseau played a really strong game. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the the reason that Saquon Barkley was picked up all those yards, where they, they started running power, and they didn't run it until that point. So what happens is you on power, you want Rousseau to go up the field toward the quarterback, and you create a natural seam. Right. And it took him a little bit of time. As soon as you step up field – and, and you are unblocked as a defensive end, you need to sit down and you need to wrong arm the puller. Mm -hmm. And wrong arm means, you, you know, you throw yourself, you know, kind of backwards into the line like this because you need to shrink 
Yeah. You need to compress that running space. And then the second thing that needs to happen is the DBs, safeties and corners that are at least near the box. They can't sit back and watch. They end up getting picked Mm. by the linebackers getting blocked. They have to be hungry and they have to fly up in there. Because otherwise, as soon as Saquon or Brita hits a seam, then you then you're doing chases, which is what we did. Right. We ended up chasing on a couple. Right. But by and large, they, they made the adjustment. Rousseau played really well. I think you know we're we're getting a little excited about Epinesa. He he had a couple of good plays, disappeared for the rest of it. Contract year. Um, you know, say what you want. Um, and I, I and I, I'm gonna I'm gonna get controversial mm. here. I think you know Elam played well. I think he had one tug that got called, and on the play where the, the reception on the sideline, and I don't remember who the receiver is because they wear Giants outfits, and I don't follow those costumes. Um, it was a beautiful ball by Tyrod. Tyrod played a pretty darn good game, and he dropped that one in Elam. He or any other DB. He dropped several in the bucket. Yeah. yeah. Yes, he really did. So I, I think I think this was a great game for Elam. Uh, not great in performance, but not a game where he goes into the film room and they have that same old conversation. Right. 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 He goes into the film room and they have a completely different discussion. Now, everybody in their mother is going to be saying. Well, you got a target on your back, Elam, and it's not leaving anytime soon. Right. So you get one penalty, you get one ball completed on you, and you know you had your trash, your garbage, your bust. You know, cut him, you know, trade him for a ninth rounder. Right? <laughs> they don't even have nine rounds anymore. <laughs> so uh, yeah, and you you uh, you really can't complain about the defensive front four, front six, really. I think what was interesting, what stuck out to me, aside from the things that you talked about, um, was Von Miller's role. So Von Miller is nine months, right, uh, recovering off of an ACL. He's superhuman as far as his healing ability. We all know that. Um, but you've got to expect, last week he was on a pitch count, you've got to expect that they're easing him back in. So what was what was noticeable to me in the stadium and what was noticeable to me uh, in, the, in the rewatch broadcast film was his quickness off the off the jump so like that quickness at 36 second acl nine months removed is still there which is incredibly exciting but what i thought was interesting was he would he would dart and get around the corner and then he would let up almost like he was trying to force the quarterback in a direction without getting himself caught up in the fray because he's still technically injured right he's still not fully recovered he's not at 100 he's probably at 90 percent, right because it takes what does it take a full year or something like that you can play it nine months but it takes a full year to fully recover i thought von miller's just i'm excited to see him back completely healthy the defense was great i thought taron johnson played a great football game i wanted to talk about the linebackers but you covered it well like it's i miss matt milano but i think there's an aspect of like we're going to be okay here right well I, I yeah okay. no i of course you, you you miss matt milano i mean that's a given yeah. Yeah, and <clears throat> Terrell Bernard is not Matt Milano, but he's doing his damnedest. I mean, he, he's he really sticks his nose in there. He's, he has no fear. Von Miller is not ready. Agreed. Yeah, but you got to get out there, and you know, he he he's just not turning the corner. He's not dipping and ripping, and he needs to. I, I think it's okay that he's playing. I think that it's smart to get him out there uh, in a limited capacity just so he can continue to to like gently ease into some of the the, the moves that you know he was so brilliant at for for I don't know was he 12 years or nine or whatever the hell it is a long time I mean <clears throat> a very long time but he's he's not ready and uh, hopefully hopefully that turns around hopefully he starts to trust that knee and he starts to do those those Vonnie things that he does yeah. I will finish the good with uh, a gentleman that I will have been critical of the last couple of weeks, which is Josh Allen. Um, mm -hmm. In me saying on Twitter last week that he was um, off the mark, right? That a lot of that. Well, you were out, right. That a you lot, were right. Well, but Twitter didn't agree with me. They were like, you're blaming this whole loss on Josh. I was like, I said coaching and injuries aside, which means that they played a part. 
but then people were losing their minds. Like his completion percentage was blah, 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 blah. And they dropped footballs. And I was like, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the fact that he did not put the ball in a place where the receiver could do something with it afterwards. All that to say this, the good, the ball that he threw to Quinton, like was insane. And I, there's the broadcast angle. And then they did the one from, they did the one from behind the end zone. And Quentin Morris is running, gets caught up it with his defender, turns his back to Josh and runs towards the end zone. And Josh's arm is here before Quentin even turns around and that ball comes at him. Like that was just an, across the body in a very small window. It was just so like, it was just so Josh yeah. Allen. Like that and it was a fan. It was a fantastic route, but you calling out Josh like that, you're just an arsonist. That's all you are. You're just out. <laughs> you're just out there trying to blow things up. And you know, I, I know you're a big boy, right? I'll say that, and people won't say anything to me, but they'll come after you. They and I'm like 2,500 miles away. I can't fight anybody. <laughs> it's funny. No, it's a. It's just it, Jerry ostrowski has been saying it for a couple of years now that we are very slow as a fan base to lay the blame, even the media to lay the blame at Josh Allen's feet. Unless Josh says, I played like crap. Then the media is well, like, you, okay, it's allowed now. Okay, well, you have to, you, you don't have to, you can do whatever the hell you want. I make my own decisions, but it's based on how I watch the film. I don't look at the stats like I am. I haven't. I didn't look at a stat until I finished watching the game for the second time, mm -hmm. and I said, "You know what? We probably had about 160 yards rushing, and we did right around yes. that. 124. And it was, it was uh, between the running backs. I think it was 124. 128. 128. Yep. Okay. So. Uh, I, I to to what you're saying, if you look at the stat line from London and you say, well, Josh Allen didn't lose this game because you can't see it with the perspective of the, the errant throws that he made, the throws that required touch right. and the throws that just were off target. And you know what? That's fair. I mean, you're an arsonist, so you're just you're going to get shots. I mean, the, ar that's, that's the, the arson last night was when the offense was putrid through three quarters and i sent out the tweet of maximus with the are you not entertained <laughs> like i, I said it, I I it, it, it to you jerry bit on that you did not bite on that text uh neither did neither uh, you did. know i i, I hmm. did not uh spend a lot of time on social media during this game and uh, you know i was a lot the previous game i put my phone back there and i just want to watch the game so i thought maybe i was responsible for the loss yeah. So, you know, I guess I was, so I got the win. You're welcome. Yeah, we got a couple quick topics topics to talk about. Before we do that, I want to address I want to address this. I want to, to run the spot for Findle and uh Ficta Endel and Elmer. Uh, but Josh Vaughn says in the comment section, bring back the video breakdown with John. We would love to. We would absolutely love to. Um, the NFL doesn't like it. Is that the easiest way to say it? Like there's copyright rules and things like that. Uh, and then it's there's a measure of technology and the ability to do it well. Um, so it's it's a twofold thing. We if somebody could give us an idea on how to do it well and uh, how to get around the copyright infringement stuff for the NFL, because we've gotten in, we've got yeah. our hands slapped that 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 and, that and it, it takes a it takes me quite a while to prep which couple of plays I want to do. Josh, I think you want it back because you're a whistleblower and maybe you're going to get some cash from the <laughs> NFL. The it's a setup. That's a setup if I ever smelled one. And, and Josh, you know what? Thank you for being on the show. But if you were downloading this and listening to it while you're driving from Albany to Syracuse, it wouldn't make any sense to you. I enjoy doing it. I do it all the time. But uh, maybe he may be here and there. We'll sneak one in and see if Joe just gets hand slapped again. That's funny. Let's uh, let's hear from our show sponsor uh, brought to you by Bruce Nolan. It's time to say goodbye to the blur and hello to clear vision. Fichte, Endel and Elmer are the first in Western New York to bring you Zeiss Smile Technology. Along with our highly experienced surgeons, we promise an effortless journey to better vision. Gone are the days of fumbling for glasses or struggling with contact lenses. Embrace the freedom of superb sight. Because we believe you deserve the world in HD. Visit us online at Ficta.com and schedule a consultation. Ficta, Endel, and Elmer. We are focused on you. Super, super appreciative of Ficta, Endel, and Elmer Eye Care. Uh, let's real quick get through the work. We've already been kind of bouncing around through this already, but I'm gonna I'm gonna give you the floor, my friend. Um 
because yeah, I, I I feel like you will be able to be a little more concise in what you feel like needs to be fixed. Because for me, it's just more of a "What's going on?" <laughs> uh, it works for me too sometimes. Yeah. What the hell were they thinking <laughs> when the defense has three times out left and you know you need a first down? You can't ice the game. I'll give you the first run, but the second run, they walk nine guys up in the box. You know, do the signal, the hat thing, whatever it takes. Call a pass. Run a bootleg. I I just... You know, Jerry's, uh, whether he's on the line or not, when you're an offensive lineman, I mean, you look up, they got three timeouts, there's a minute 40, and you're like, it's not a, it would be nice to have a first down. You must get it. Let's do what we do. Mm. And when they ran those two runs, I was just, I was nauseous. I was like, the sec, the first one you can get away with. The second one, you see how, and they stack those guys up in the box soon enough. Call a different play. You know, you audible, do something. I, I was just disgusted by that. Now, of course, there wasn't Josh much audible throwing thing. a better ball. Had Josh thrown a better ball and Dawson Knox caught it, you know, we wouldn't be having this conversation. Uh, what was it? First and goal, second and goal at the one or wherever the hell it was. And we're in shotgun again. Mm-hmm. I mean, everybody hates that. And, you know, I'm the guy that tries to rationalize everything, everything. and try to give some sort of excuse to try and play <laughs> the middle as a former player who's been under the purview of a head coach, a D coordinator, an O-line coach. But it's just dog crap, man. Yeah. I just don't. It, it's just line up. You know, everybody grow beard and mash and mash and just go forward. I don't love it. And Josh actually does okay under center. I don't know why we're so allergic to it. I don't then, mind. He, does, he, does, he did it in the middle of the field. He's under center. I'm like, save that one for the goal line. Here's I don't, an idea. I don't mind at all when he is in shotgun sh- on third and short or whatever, as long as he's running the football. Like, if he drops back, hits that back leg and goes, it's five – to 10 yards every single time he does it just about but yes to to yeah it's there's there's madness as far as that goes um the the one that got me was the errant pass not errant pass but the 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 pass that dawson knox dropped to ice the game you run the football there and you're taking an extra 40 seconds off the clock like why are you passing the i know you want to pass the ball but why it's third and eight i get it like it's not an easy pickup but if you run the football and you right, you get three yards or four yards. James Cook, who and and Latavius Murray are both having relatively decent days on the ground. They get three yards, four yards. Put the ball where you want to put it. Whatever you'd run another forty seconds off the clock. Kick the field goal. Hopefully it goes in. And even if it doesn't, they've got forty seconds. They don't have a minute thirty eight. Yeah, no. I mean, either way you want to run it. I'm just more attack oriented. You know, we need a first down. Let's let's freaking let's do our offense. It's just, it doesn't bode well when you stack those little guys up in there. You're just inviting them to pack the box. It's just a hard way to win a football game. You know, do what you do really, really well in those situations. I don't know. I don't love it. And frankly, you know, we hit two field goals that our guy normally hits. And that's his job, right? Right, So he had a crappy game. I can say it out loud. He had a crappy game. He missed two kicks that he would normally kick. Now, I'm sure I'd rather have touchdowns, but we were in a position with his abilities to kick a field goal, kick the damn field goal. Right. Trying to respond to spin, uh, and I I typed a response, and it deleted it on me. So keep talking. Sorry. Uh, Yeah, I don't know. We'll have to research that spin. We'll do what we can. All twenty. Well, no, it's it's not available until Tuesday. Is the problem? Yeah, that's the problem. It's not. And by that time, all you guys want to talk about is the next game anyway. So that's why this show (laughs) follows the game, baby. But Uh, so let's 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 continue on this a little bit. Yeah, there's no question in my mind that Dorsey is a little bit on the hot seat. And probably Dable too, since they both start with Do. Right, <laughs> Double. I'm sticking with that. I'm I'm dying on that hill. <laughs> and you know, it's a little bit of his own making, not be not because of always because of his play calling, but I think there's more there. Just as you were talking about earlier, 
you know, conceptually, there's more to the game that we are not doing. Right. And it's either he's limited in his uh, either experience, knowledge, or he's afraid, right, to do something that's a little outside the box. But, yeah, I think he's, I think he's a little bit in the hot seat. You think that Ken Dorsey is on the hot seat? I think it's, um, you know, I, I have, I live in Arizona, right? I got this new truck and it's got heated seats. Not, I have no idea why they would even ship a truck for sale to Arizona with heated seats. My wife's car has air conditioned seats and heated seats. Yeah, I know. She's big time though. So the, the, great story. I'm driving. We, we had had my wife's car for about 10. Wait, 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 wait. Ago, Hold ago. your story. <laughs> there are three levels to the setting. Right, there's warm. Oh, it's fancy. There's, oh, there's a ooh, that's uh, that's that's warmer. And then swamp. And then there's ass. my ass is on fire. Swamp ass. So I think Dorsey is at at level one, or the button is like, you know, they're reaching for the button. I, I'll and, come. And, I'll come back to that. Okay, now I'll tell your silly story about so, you so we, out we had had my wife's new car for about 10 miles. I and I'm exaggerating, it was maybe may been 100, whatever. And it was a hot day, hot evening, and me and my wife and another couple were going to see Nate Bargatze perform at, at UB. He's a stand up comedian, super hilarious. If you don't know who he is, check him out. Um, and for some reason, like the car's making a noise. And I don't know if you're like me, but most dudes in cars, if there's a noise that's not normal or familiar, we like yeah. lose our minds trying to figure out what the heck is this noise? What the hell Where's is the that, right? Yeah, finally I figure it out. It's the it's the seat cooler. The seat cooler has like a fan in it, so uh, it was making like a little... Yeah, well, little, of course, that's how you move air. <laughs> it makes sense now, but at the moment I was like, what is that noise? Anyway, uh, so Sean McDermott was asked by the Buffalo mm -hmm. Bills uh, media today, by the Buffalo media today, uh, if there would be any consideration or if he would ever give can ever give consideration, I'm not exactly sure how it was worded uh, to somebody else calling offensive plays. And McDermott was like, nope. And you're shaking no. your head like that's the obvious answer. However, we don't need to go back very far. Just a couple of years. And McDermott took the play calling away from Leslie Frazier. Yeah, well, I don't see McDermott as being an offensive wizard. I don't see him calling the plays. No, it wouldn't be him. I don't know who your backup is in, Joe this, Brady. in this scenario. There's, Joe Brady, there's got to be somebody else, but for all intents no, and purposes, but yeah. I don't I don't see it. You're four and two. You might not like everything you see, but it hasn't been egregious. Oh, uh it's just I I hate I hate the notion of it worked, we won. Like, I hate that. Like, why would we change anything? We won. Well, okay. It, it, play calling is not just like dial it up. It doesn't work that way. And it takes a while for people to get their sea legs. And if they never get it, then they're gone. Mm -hmm. I think Dorsey's somewhere in, on the cusp. I don't think he's horrible. Like, a lot of people want to drag the guy behind a car. But I think he needs to get better he needs to look deeper into the playbook at various times of the game he needs to get away from doing the shotgun at the two yard line um I, I just i don't believe in that and somebody else like you might say i'm good with that if josh is going to run it but clearly josh isn't running it as much anymore except when uh opportunity presents I, so, I, don't, I don't think it's a good um, comparison because I think you you guys ran like six plays, right? And, J and Jim was calling his own plays. You were not there when Marcha Broda was there. Uh, who was the? How many offensive coordinators did you have in your time with the Bills? Uh, four. Four. One, two, three, four, five, maybe four. I think what's four. weird about it in your situation because wow. Jim was calling the plays. So as a musician, right there stylistically there's a style that i effectively am want to be whatever like like a style of music that i play perform yada yada that doesn't mean that i can't execute country that i can't execute jazz that i can't execute some other version of music that isn't necessarily my wheelhouse i feel mm -hmm. like to bring this all around ken dorsey took the dable playbook and is trying to incorporate the things that he likes or the things that he liked as a quarterback that aren't necessarily mm -hmm. akin to the Dable platform, the Dable scheme, the Dable, whatever you want to call it. So it's like me, if I were a country artist, 
and I joined a rock band and then we started writing music and I was starting to throw country flair into it and it just started getting weird. And I feel like that's kind of what's happening. There's a lot of Dorseyisms in the Dable scheme that don't really jive. Uh, I'm going to measure my response with, I, I think that it's less constrictive than you want to believe. Like it's, it's every offense can evolve into something else and everything has, and again, it's not a, it's not akin to playing, you know, heavy metal and then having some country chords rolled in. It, it's, it would be a little bit more of, uh, you know, old country with some new country rhythms. So I don't think that anybody's offensive philosophy is so restricted that there aren't ways to enhance it. So we could just leave it at that, Joe, because... Yeah, no, that, that makes the, sense. The, the, but what I will say is it, it, you don't just like, all right, Joe Miller, you're the offensive coordinator. I mean, you've got to... It takes a long time, I think, to get into that role. And by and large, that's what training camp is for. Right. Yeah, for sure. Well, it takes a long time. Three games. Three mm -hmm. games is is not a long time, right? I mean, it takes more no. Uh, but that. But if that's all the time you have, it's a long time. Yeah, for sure, for sure. So, uh, let's get ready to wrap the show up and let's talk about our last topic, which is the Buffalo Bills will be uh, playing the New England Patriots this coming weekend. Uh, the New England Patriots, who went thirty possessions before finding the red zone. Mac Jones, if it wasn't already known by Bill's Mafia, it is now known around the NFL world that he is not a good quarterback. Um, he has been a turnover machine. He got, I think he ended up with a safety this past weekend. Uh, Bill Belichick is in the throes of the worst opening season or beginning of a season that he's ever had. I, for one, have tweeted several times that I don't think Bill Belichick is the greatest head coach of all time. Uh, without Tom Brady, he's pretty much average at best. I think the best NFL head coach in the modern area might modern era might be Mike Tomlin, who's never gone less than 500 in a season. You're talking about a guy that makes chicken salad out of chicken all the time, as far as that goes. However, in my opinion, I'm going to give you the Sterles version. The Buffalo Bills should dog walk the Patriots this weekend, right? And they should have dog walked the Giants yesterday yeah but they have a habit of dog walking the patriots like if there's yeah. a get, if there's a get right game it's this game okay so that's the question i think you could take you could take the disappointment of london the blah win yesterday which was a slug fest and and just crush those both together into the win that we thought as fans we would have yesterday mm -hmm. right I have to jump on something real quick. John Hammer says, dude, Belichick is why we lost to the Giants in 91. That is not true. Belichick basically somewhat made us play into his hands in that first Super Bowl. The reason that we lost that Super Bowl, and John, you didn't play in that one. You weren't on the team then. You were still at Arizona, was because Jim Kelly continued to throw the football. When Thurman Thomas had 135 yards on, I think, 14 carries, had they just fed the ball to Thurman the whole game, that game would have been iced. So, anyway. <clears throat> Can you do that math? What what is uh 14 carries? What's what's that average? 14, 135 yards on 14 carries. It's pretty good, right? Uh, nine. It's pretty it's good. A lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. And uh Cook had over five. So yeah, this yeah. game. I yeah. I like uh I like us at New England <clears throat> AstroTurf. I think that matters. I think that that helps. You know, grass hurt Thurman every now and again. You know, when it got slick, you can't, you shouldn't cut on your inside leg. And the way Thurman ran the ball, I don't see Latavius Murray or Cook running the same style that Thurman did. Mm. So I don't, I don't think it has a, as big effect on these guys. But I think AstroTurf, and it sounds silly to say it, you know, I think AstroTurf helps us in this. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. think it, 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 uh, what I loved, and we didn't talk about this. Uh, they did on TV, and I, I have to give a shout out to Tariko and Collinsworth. It was about the first game where Collinsworth didn't make me want to throw up. Yeah, um, I agree. But what he made he made the comment, or Tariko, and I think it was Collinsworth. He said, "You know, Ken Dorsey and Sean McDermott are coming out and running the ball. They are maintaining patience." And I think that it, if we look back at this game more as a springboard to go forward, it's 
you can run the football and trust that you're going to run it well if you apply it right so mm -hmm. you have to have you have to have faith you know you could argue that it's because we have mcgovern and we have uh torrance now but they ran the ball extremely efficiently yesterday yeah and it is it is it is the groundwork of every uh great football team my opinion only apparently but are we are we at the point we've talked the last couple of years about the Bills wanting to be multiple? You and I have talked about it, multiple in the run game. Are we at the point where they're just going to settle on a run scheme and do it? They did yesterday. They ran two plays. The whole game. They ran two plays. I think I mean more they, game. They ran, I, mean, I mean more they game, ran a, game. They they ran a variation within those plays. For example, if you're running five guys zone to the right mm -hmm. and you have the receiver or the tight end coming back and kicking out the end, that's still zone blocking. Now you can run that same play with Edwards in the backfield going and kicking the end, mm. right? Just, just in the same way that I, I hated Collinsworth for him calling it trap that the Giants were running because it was power. You can run power with the, the tight end following the guard or you can have the tight end on the front side and he's just releasing for the guy that he would have. He, he's the first guy, but he's taking the second guy. There's a drawing attached to this conversation that we can't do here. But the Bills basically ran zone. Right. The, almost every running play was zone. It was just a variation thereof. Yeah. And they ran it superbly. You weren't, uh, you weren't on Twitter today, I think you said. Uh, Thurman Thomas Jr., uh, tweeted out, I think last night, and he said, I am done with the inside delay handoff. Like I've seen enough of it. To which Thurman Thomas Sr. <laughs> retweeted it and posted right there with you, son. <laughs> so both of them are over so, the delay handoff for the Buffalo Bills currently. Right. And and frankly, it's uh delayed handoffs, like mm -hmm. like they're kind of describing, but because the ball is in flight before Josh gets it, yeah. there is a delay by the time the running back gets it and can make his reads. So the difference is when you took the ball under center, the quarterback's going backward while the running back is going forward and you get to the line of scrimmage a little bit quicker. And, yeah. you know, the, the, the zone read, the inside zone play, it's blocked a little bit differently conceptually, but the real difference is the distance – from the line of scrimmage or the the downhill speed of the running back by the time he gets it. And I, I don't disagree with those guys at all. And I did see something, I think cover one put it up, the difference between draw and what they call duo, which is basically inside zone. And it, it's the blocking scheme. It's what's, mm -hmm. are you selling pass or are you making it look like a run? Right. But I, I think there's some merit to that. You know, I don't know that, James Cook is a big bruising back, but I think Latavius Murray can certainly lower his shoulder a little bit better. And if, if you can, so many of the yards that you gain are at the point or after you are being tackled, mm -hmm. right? So if, if a running back can engage the defense, the defender before he has a chance to settle his hands and reset himself against the offensive lineman, then he's always making an arm tackle. He's always leaning back to make the tackle, and you're always looking at two to three yards. Gotcha. But if the defender has a chance to set his hands and then make a read and shed, and the ball carrier is still not near the line of scrimmage, that's a much bigger challenge. Now, look, they're not going to stop evolving the game because you and I had a four-minute discussion on this podcast. <laughs> so we is where we are. We be where we is, and we just got to make it work more gooder. You talk jive? Sorry. I'm no. That, that, when, <laughs> airplane, when I coach football, airplane quote. Airplane quote. <laughs> what, yeah, I know it is. When, when, I'm, when I'm talking to the kids at practice, I always mispronounce something or spell something wrong to see if they're paying attention. Gotcha. So sometimes I think you're drifting on me, Joe. Nope. Nope. I'm actually just trying to segue into, I definitely don't drift. I'm trying to think of where, where we're going next, uh, which we are going to, no, no, we're done with that. We both pretty much said they should dog walk the Patriots. Uh, but uh, where we're going next is getting you out of here so that you can make it to practice. That's where we're going. Yeah. With, with uh, luck. Before, before I uh, get us out of here, any final 
thoughts, comments, words. The, the whole breakdown you just did was fantastic for those that want more of the uh, football stuff, right? Technical aspect of the game. Yeah. Uh, I'll, you know what? I just keep the faith. Uh, there, There's only been a couple of perfect seasons. You're going to drop some. You're going to have some non-stellar performances. So you could maybe – chalk this up to one but after reviewing the game it wasn't as bad as it as it felt yesterday minus that last drive where we needed to ice it so i would just say you know patience be ready Uh, our team is still there they're still evolving and we just make sure we can't miss a step yeah i think uh, i said it on the show this morning the overreaction show if the bills had won in london beat beat jacksonville i think we feel different about this football game this win yep Agreed. We, I, we all agree they escaped, but we feel different about it. It's like they escaped, whoosh, right? Coming off London, yep. travel, blah, 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 blah. But it's like, why does this game look so much like London? This is a problem. Like two is a problem. And some, sometimes escape is all you get. So, yeah, and that's all you need, right? So, that's right. I mean, the Patriots won a Super Bowl by escaping when the uh, Seattle Seahawks threw instead of giving the ball to Marshawn Lynch, which, by the way, the Giants should have done on the last untimed down. They should have given the ball to Saquon. The hole was there. I could see it from my seat. I was like, oh, my God, don't give it. And they threw the balls like, thank God. I thought they were going to run it. I thought they were going to run it. So like, anyways, ladies and gentlemen, you have been tuned into the Off Tackle with John Fina show brought to you by Fichte, Endel, and El. El- oh, I got to go this way. El- El- Elmer Eye Care on the Buffalo Rumblings Vidcast Network. Thank you so much to everybody who has joined us for this live show. We appreciate every single one of you. We will be back next week uh, after the Patriots game. But for myself, for John Fina, for everybody here at Buffalo Rumblings, go Bills. Go Bills. Go Bills.